everybody. Welcome to the Mental Health Minute by Elite DNA. I'm with my co-host and Chief Clinical Officer, Dr. Sharon Bloom. How are you, Dr. Bloom? Hi, good morning. How's, how, how are you doing? Good, good. So we have a very interesting show today. We have um, two speakers uh, who, who are going to be joining us and talking about the topic of mood disorders. And so joining us today, we have Chantal Pepe, one of our fantastic therapists. How are you, Chantal? Well, thank you. How are you? Good. Very good. Thank you. And Corlin Patterson, who's one of our amazing physicians assistants. How are you, Court? Doing well. Awesome. So, Dr. Bloom, you know, the topic, again, we're, we're discussing today is mood disorders. Um, this quarantine situation, some people are inching their way out. But, uh, you know, in some ways, the signs of depression look a lot like being in, in lockdown. Um, when you think about it, uh, that social withdrawal, feelings of hopelessness, lack of concentration, uh, sleeping too much or too little. Uh, we don't have access to some of the activities we usually enjoy. Um, how do we distinguish between some of these depressive symptoms uh, and a real clinical depression? Corey? So of course, if you're in a, a situation where you're socially isolated from your friends or other family members and you're, you're stuck inside all the time, you're going to have a degree of you know what we call like you know sadness or melancholy maybe a little lack of motivation as you said lack of concentration what separates you know feeling sad due to negative circumstances from an actual mood disorder clinically speaking is that a mood disorder you're going to start to see a degree of severity and feeling so bad that is significantly impacting your ability to do work or school. We would also say significantly impact like your ability to like socialize with others, although that criteria might be a little muddied by the fact that, you know, we're so isolated from one another to begin with. But, you know, classically you would see somebody who's so depressed that they never go out anymore because the motivation is just so drained from them. And that's a big part of really gauging the severity of depression is your overall motivation. A lot of the time, you know, people with really bad depression, they can't get out of bed just because it's so hard to work up that little spark of energy needed to get going. So Chantel, whether it's your clients or people, you know, watching at home, um, how, how do you guide them through coping with their, you know, their, their mood disorder, the disorder, during, especially a time like now during COVID? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the biggest things is to talk about it. Um, you, you've got to talk about what's going on inside you. And um, since you're in the house with your family members, most of the time, those are the perfect people to talk with. Also, you want to make sure that you're letting people know what you need. Um, if you need to be left alone for a while, ask for it. If you need a hug, ask for that. Um, people generally want to help and they just don't know how. So if we let them know, we're kind of helping, you know, some of those anxious feelings for both parties. Um, you know, and then there's the general, um, just kind of self care. You wanna make sure that you have good sleep hygiene. You know, what are you doing right before you go to bed? Are you, are you getting a good night's sleep? Are you waking up too early, waking up too late? Um, with lack of things to do, people are spending a lot of time in front of the TV. Um, you know, did you shower today? Um, did you get outside? Um, those things can really change your mood. So change your environment, talk about it, and definitely take care of yourself. Be mindful. Awesome. And, and same question to you, Court. So anytime, you know, whether you are a patient seeing somebody in therapy or psychiatry, or you're just not feeling as great as you used to, I always recommend some form of physical activity. Now, granted, if you are feeling very depressed, again, the crux of that is working up the motivation to go and do that. You know, I'll talk to a lot of people like, well, the gym's not open. And, you know, I don't like to walk around. It's a bad neighborhood. At the end of the day, though, you should try whatever it takes to, you know, get that heart rate elevated for 20 minutes. And, you know, whether you want to buy a jump rope or, do like lunges. There's lots of exercises you can find online that you can do in a very small space. Were we to develop a medication or supplement that could garner all of the positive effects of exercise, 
absolutely every single person would be taking that medication or supplement. Um, you know, we could go through a huge laundry list of physiologically how it helps every single kind of like organ group, but specifically for mental health, we do notice concrete changes and the overall structure of the brain that you see conducive to better regulation of your emotions. Uh, specifically, there's a part of the brain called the hippocampus kind of in the rear. And we see in depression a shrinkage of the volume of that. Likewise, in you know, long-term studies, we do see a kind of defense against that shrinkage in depressed patients. Interesting. So it sounds like what you're saying is there may be some organic ways to enhance your mood if you're dealing with depression or some kind of mood disorder. But maybe the message is this is good for everyone. Yeah. Uh, whether you have a mood disorder or not. Um, but uh, what else are people doing uh, to cope with the quarantine in general? Maybe we can share some uh, personal ideas or strategies that have worked. Well, you know, for instance, like uh, just as an example, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, I can't go to the gym or I don't want to go out or I want to social distancing. Um, I'm trying to follow my own advice and doing whatever I can to exercise. Uh, I'm just doing like, you know, I'm just like speed walking around like the backyard. You know, if anyone looks in and sees me, I'm going to look like, you know, I'm insane just pacing around my backyard. But at the end of the day, I'm, you know, getting my heart rate up. I'm exercising and you know, sustaining that elevated heart rate for 20 minutes, breathing a little heavy, and you know, you feel good after. You feel good because of the physiological effects of exercise, and you feel good, like Chantel was saying, feeling good by proxy of just accomplishing something and being productive. Mm -hmm. What about you, Chantel? Yeah. I think that um, setting goals is really important. You should have a goal that you want to meet every day. Um, that'll give you some motivation. It'll also make you feel like, you know, you've accomplished something. Um, but personally, I've been doing a, spending a lot of time with my, my dog. So pet therapy is awesome when you're doing quarantine. <laughs> what, what kind of dog do you have? I have a West Highland Terrier. Oh, very cool. And, and he has a very cool attitude. <laughs> I, I'm so glad you said the word goals, because that was actually a question I had is, you know, what goals, you know, sh or should we have goals during this time? Should they be, um, you know, should they be altered knowing that, you know, we can't do everything we want to do or just knowing that we're trying to be our, our best self today. And so that was my question. So I'm glad you brought that up, Chantel, because uh, that's something that I've been doing is, you know, looking at, you know, I can't go to the gym, but there's other things that I've been, you know, trying to do for years or, or at least wanted to do for years, uh, like, like some gymnastics movements, handstand, you know, walking and, you know, handstand freestanding holds. And so I've been using those as my goals as, you know, things, breaking it down to, to improve. And so that's how I've been keeping my, myself busy. Um, but, you know, the question I have for, for you both, and we'll start with Chantel. So summer is coming up. It's right around the corner. You know, Lee County Schools, uh, you know, ends June 3rd. And so for a lot of people, their lives will not change because they're already at home with their kids. Um, you know, or, or they're a teacher and they're already at home anyway. And, you know, they're not, they have that summer off, but, but they're still pretty much at home anyway. And for, some, you know, for a lot of people, nothing is, you know, is going to change. And so, you know, how, how do we, you know, prepare ourselves? Because it is a little bit, you know, frustrating that pretty much from March to potentially August, if things stay the same as they are now, that there's really not that change in their life. They can't travel. They can't do the things that maybe they want to do in going out or things that they may enjoy, the simple things like going out to eat with a large group of friends. So, you know, what advice do you have for them, you know, with the summer approaching that they can, you know, look to something to, you know, be positive about or, or maybe reframe it? Well, I think that, you know, maybe letting things happen organically might be the answer. You know, maybe you don't have a plan for every day. Maybe you don't have, you know, specific things that you want to do with your kids. Um, but, you know, kind of let them choose. You know, you might find that they can come up with things that we can't. Um, and mostly kids just want to spend time with their parents. So I think anything that you can do as a family is, is good time spent. 
So obviously, you know, things aren't as good as they were with us being on lockdown. And there's a few, you know, negatives kind of floating around, like thinking, oh, I'm stuck. I can't do what I wanted to do. You know, I had, you know, my kids are a little overbearing, but I think people should, you know, take a moment to also appreciate the things that are still going well, you know, when we're used to living well and we get to see those things taken away, it can be hard. But at the end of the day, you know, we're still, I mean, most of us anyways, we're still in like nice air conditioned environments. You know, we go to bed, you know, without being hungry. Um, you know, we have, you know, things of entertainment that we can always, you know, use to distract ourselves. There's many things out there that we take for granted still. And I think if we take a few minutes of the day to kind of explore the things that we still have that we can be grateful for, we won't have, you know, our consciousness flooded with just negatives. And people might say, you know, oh, well, I'm a realist and, you know, I don't want to focus on those things. But at the end of the day, if it's making you feel better, being more appreciative and grateful, it's doing you a service. And I think it's worth trying. Sure. And what about you, Dr. Blue? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think uh, our mindset is going to be important on this one because there are a lot of uncertainties and we could dwell on that or we could choose to dwell on some of the silver linings, um, you know, that have come with this whole quarantine and pandemic situation. Um, I think if we can pay attention and be mindful of you know, what we're thinking and uh, one of my favorite uh, positive coping statements starts with, but at least. Uh, if you're going down a dark road, find your butt at least, and it'll at least point you in the right direction. See, I used it already. But um, I think it's, it's a good one, and you'll start hearing it here and there as people become adept at using it. But it's, it's a great way to, you know, find the one thing or one element of something that's not so bad. And there's always something. So that's what I would recommend. And, and I guess last question before we close up, just kind of throwing something in there. For people watching at home, what is one healthy habit you do every day and why? And we'll start with Chantel. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> one healthy habit I do every day. Um, I find things that I'm grateful for. Okay, awesome. Corlin? So I really try to spend uh, just 10 minutes meditating. Um, and I think a big struggle people have with meditation is they believe that they have to have a perfectly clear Zen empty mind. And that's really, you know, maybe the end goal of meditation, but meditation itself is simply mindfulness. So if you're sitting there trying to meditate and you're like, okay, I'm distracted, I'm distracted, I'm distracted. That's completely fine. You can be like, okay, I'm distracted. I noticed that now I'm going to try to go back to relaxing. And then two seconds later, another distraction will come. And a lot of people get discouraged by that, but that in and of itself is meditation. That's the process. And I practice that every day. And once you really start to get good at it, it's amazing how calm you can feel after doing it. Awesome. Dr. Bloom? Great. Well, uh, I, think, uh, I think everybody knows about, about me already. My, my family walk uh, at 6 p.m. every day. Um, and my, my love of baking and trying out more, more challenging recipes. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd also say that I try to reach out to people, uh, you know, people I haven't spoken to in a while. This is a perfect excuse. Hey, there's a pandemic. How are you? I mean, you know, so I, I've gotten back in touch or been in more touch with family members and friends who aren't in my immediate area. And that's been really, really nice and feels really healthy. Awesome. Yeah, for me, it's, it, you know, it's, I have to learn something new every day. So whether it's a YouTube video or I, I, I also read a lot, but it, you know, it's just something that I didn't know the previous day. I have to, you know, learn it again. Usually it's something that, that interests me uh, and I have to write, write it down. So I have a, you know, a journal of all the things I've learned. I've been, I started about a year and a half ago. So, and, you know, it, when you look back on it, you kind of look at that every day, you're just getting a little bit better, right? You know, they, they say get 1% better every day. So that's kind of my goal. Well, I appreciate uh, Chantel and, and Court joining us. And so for, again, those who are interested in, in maybe starting services with the Lead DNA, or with, specifically with Chantel or Cortland, um, you can call us uh, at 239 239-223-2751. You could also visit our website at EliteDNA.us. I believe you'll see Chantal and Cortland's pictures on there as well. Um, and we look, uh, you know, we look forward to uh, having you guys maybe on the, the show in the future. And I thank you for your time. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Dr. Bloom. I hope you have a great, uh, great day. Thank you, everybody. And this is the Mental Health Minute from Elite DNA. Thanks.
Thank you. Thank you both. I appreciate it.